Good afternoon, evening or morning, New Zealand and the world, Lucas Lawman's Kiwi Voice. Today, it's time to talk the Marsden Point oil refinery closure. We've just got our hands on Operation Good Oil's recent summary report on the closure. Now, Operation Good Oil is one of a number of organisations that are doing great work up in Northland at the refinery and around the refinery, bringing awareness and looking into the effects that the closure will have on New Zealand, along with Camp Sour that we have had on the show and digging at Marsden with uh, Brad Flutie and co as well. Operation Good Oil has produced what they are calling the summary report on the closure of Marsden Point Oil Refinery, a really, really well-written, well-put-together document. It's been put together by uh, committee members David Trotter, who's the lead researcher and author, Levi Wolf, sub-researcher and editor, and Carl Barkley, nautical tracking and sub-research. So give you an idea of who Operation Good Oil is. They're an information and awareness campaign which is made up of dedicated team of concerned individuals who seek to bring the truth of New Zealand's current looming energy crises into the light of day. Neither Operation Good Oil nor any of its contributing members have been recompensed in any way, shape or form in the production of this report that we're discussing today. It has been produced solely through volunteering of time and resources. This report does not constitute financial or legal advice, nor is it intended to substitute signed sound financial and or legal advice. Bit of a disclaimer there for you, you know we've got to get through those. If you are after a copy of this report, they have reduced it for the people of New Zealand, chuck us an email through to yourkiwivoice at gmail.com and I will ensure that a copy of the report gets to you. Now, who are David Trotter and Carl Barkley and Levi Wolf? Well, Dave Trotter is an experienced in data analysis through database design and construction. David is also a qualified engineer, diesel mechanic, and has extensive teaching experience in diesel mechanics, database construction, and design. Carl Barclay is an accomplished engineer who is now retired but remains deeply invested in the ongoing safety and security of New Zealand like a lot of us Kiwis are. He has been following in the Marsden Point issue for a number of years and since the closure of the refinery in April 22 has been tracking fuel tanker movements. Now for those of you out there that aren't familiar with Marsden Point and uh, the history around it, there is a brief introduction within the document. Now we're not going to cover off all of this document. We are looking to have an interview in the coming days uh, with the authors of this report. So keep an eye out for that on Kiwi Voice, whereas they can go from a much more educated standpoint into a bit more detail around what they're talking about here. But a brief in introduction to Marsden Point. Marston Point Oil Refinery was originally constructed in 1962 as a public-private partnership. It was opened in 1964 with the male major oil companies owning about two-thirds of the shares and private investors the remainder. Over the decades, the taxpayer of New Zealand has invested billions of dollars into the refinery and pipeline. Much of the investment was not required to be paid back by the company and the installed equipment was essentially gifted. One such notable injection of plant was the Hydro Cracker Pipeline and Wirree Terminal Upgrades at a cost of $1.84 billion in 1980 to 86. You can imagine what that would translate to in terms of today's dollars. The refinery was New Zealand's only large-scale refinery and was officially closed on the 1st of April. 2022. Well, the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment has commissioned its own reports uh, and revealed concerns involving imported finished fuel supplies. Between a quarter and a third less overall fuel stock in the country, what they say, no ability to correct imports that are not up to standard and no ability to process crude in a global emergency. Now that's uh, that's one thing coming from the government department, but the report obviously goes into significantly more detail, but a number of other effects. It talks to slipping, uh, shipping stockpiling issues, the ability to refine in a global emergency being far easier than the energy minister Megan Woods has indicated. It discusses the issues around crude versus refined importation. The issues around the agriculture sector and what they face uh, with regards to diesel uh, and the potential supply issues there. 
Now, Kiwi Voice has been keeping a close eye and has reported on and spoke about on a number of occasions issues within the agricultural sector here and around the world as different climate change driven policies and processes and procedures are being pushed through at speed in different governments around the world. So we'll get into a little bit of detail about that based on what's written in the report there. Page 9, diesel is New Zealand's main source of energy for agriculture and transport. Now without the Marsden Point refinery, New Zealand does not have the capacity to produce the energy required for current existing primary industries. The refining crisis was known in 2021. The IEA, so that's the International Energy Agency, has been reporting since November 2021 that there is a shortage in global refineries. They've referenced everything in this document to other uh, sources and uh, official documentation. New Zealand could produce at minimum 15% of its energy requirements. Paragraph 30 under Implications for Fuel Supply Resilience of the MBIE proactively released document Fuel Supply Resilience Without a Domestic Oil Refinery dated in September 2021 states... Domestic crude production is currently equivalent to about 20% of New Zealand's total fuel demand and is declining. While the refinery is configured to refine overseas crude oil, in an emergency the refinery could potentially refine domestic crude oil from Taranaki at some level provided the closed border event does not also restrict other essential refining inputs. Meeting even a fraction of normal fuel demand could enable at least some critical functions to be maintained, e.g. food distribution, even though most fuel use would be severely, severely constrained. So even MBIE is stating that uh, the ability to get things going in emergency is at odds with what the Minister of Energy, Megan Woods, is saying. As I say, the report continues into a number of other bits of detail around uh, global supply currently, the effect on world events and what that's having on supply, as well as decisions from major uh, economies, such as Biden's releasing of stockpiles, at own doing the same, before getting into what I think is worth touching on in this quick summary video, and that is the regards of the effect on climate change. It notes our participation in global accords, including the Paris uh, Accord, well, namely the Paris Accord, but states New Zealand's contribution to pollution and carbon emissions on a worldwide scale are statistically insignificant. New Zealand's gross emissions contributed approximately 0.17% of the world's gross emissions, and that's according to environment.govt.nz. Even if New Zealand was to reduce its emissions to zero, it would have no measurable impact on global pollution or gas emissions. There is currently no viable alternative to oil for agriculture, horticulture and transport. New Zealand's electricity grid is ageing, and it peaked demand in most centres during winter months. New construction of electricity generators poses a myriad of environmental challenges, including, including that of New Zealand's anti nuclear stance. Electric heavy vehicles are incredibly expensive and environmentally destructive. There are numerous studies available online that point to electric vehicles being pollution intensive and carbon positive to manufacture and run. Now that is of course based around the mining that's required, the materials that are required and the various ports of travel around the world that are required to manufacture the batteries and the cars themselves. This report will not venture into those issues as we believe the logic is self-evident and the facts require little study. It's been available, that information, for some time. The same self-evidences are clear for biofuels being carbon positive and energy waste intensive through manufacturing processes. So it's interesting stuff uh, in this report from Operation Good Oil. Absolutely worth a read. As I say, chuck us an email at yourkiwivoice at gmail.com uh, and we will get a copy through to you. It's 14 pages long. I've just given you some highlights. And as I say, we're looking to get the authors, researchers of the report on the show in the coming days or weeks uh, to have a good yarn with us in a little bit more detail about what's going on. So raising awareness about the issue that the closure of the Marsden Point oil refinery is having on New Zealand. Absolutely worth it, team. Thanks for taking the time to tune in and listen to this critical issue for New Zealand. If you love what we do, by all means, chuck some stars our way with that little button at the bottom of the screen there. If you're watching this on YouTube, 
hit that subscribe button, share these links around Facebook as well, get amongst the conversation below in the comments, keep it respectful, but for now team, stay safe, stay free, and we'll see you again real soon.